welcome in. You are looking live at another episode of Examining the Evidence in the case of John Benet Ramsey. After I posted my last video about the movie Ransom and how it plays into the Ramsey case, I received a number of DMs and comments about the movie posters in the Ramsey basement. So in this episode, I will break down and analyze all of the films found on the posters in the Ramsey basement. Who do they belong to? Are they relevant to this case? Who most likely fits the profile of the person who was so moved by each movie they spent good money framing and displaying the theatrical poster for each film? I'll answer these questions and a whole lot more. Thanks for tuning in and let's go. Looking through a person's internet browsing cache, their mobile phone, or even examining the books on their bookcase can reveal scores of information about them. This is the type of info that is vital when investigating a case because an offender will always write their individual personality, cognition, behavior, and emotionality into the crime scene. So, we know the movies played a leading role in the creation of the Ramsey Ransom Note. And as seen in the crime scene video, the Ramseys had at least six different movie posters in their basement. Four of them were hung on the walls in the train room and two were leaned up against a wall. The first movie poster that was hung above the train table in the train room from right to left was of the movie Star Trek The Motion Picture released in 1979. This was the first theatrical release for the franchise that starred the original made-for-television cast, including the risk-taking, headstrong leader, Captain Kirk. In John Ramsey's 1998 interview, he spontaneously brings up Star Trek and surmises that the SBTC sign-off of the ransom note might stand for Star-Based Technical Command in the Star Trek universe. A year or so later, in his book, The Death of Innocence, on page 307, Ramsey actually offers up a correction to the misinformed public. He tells us that the acronym BORG, B-O-R-G, doesn't stand for bent on Ramsey guilt, but rather the film term BORG comes from Star Trek and refers to a civilization of people linked to a collective consciousness. This tells us John Ramsey is definitely familiar with the Star Trek lingo and universe. The next frame movie poster is The Devil at Four O'Clock from 1961. It starred Frank Sinatra as a rebel-like prisoner turned hero and leader of men. The film opens on a plane with three prisoners being transported to Tahiti. The plane makes an overnight stop on the island of Tolua, but gets stranded when a volcano violently erupts. The three prisoners and pilot then perform a daring airplane rescue, parachuting down to rescue the children stuck on the slope of the volcano. This is classic Sinatra, who ends up leading the rescue, starting from the airplane where he is the first to jump. This film somehow inspired John in his early life. Moving on to the third theatrical poster. This is Somewhere in Time, which debuted in 1980. The film starred another flying vessel, Superman, Christopher Reeve, and takes place at the Palatial Grand Hotel on beautiful Mackinac Island in Michigan, where almost the entire movie was filmed. Ramsey was raised in Michigan and visited the island as a kid. Later, he would buy a summer home less than 50 miles from Mackinac in Charlevoix, Michigan. He would bring his family on holiday to the island and in the summer would competitively race his sailboat on Lake Michigan in the annual Port Huron to Mackinac Island yacht race. John definitely identified with this film. The fourth movie poster hung in the Ramsey basement was An Officer and a Gentleman. This 1982 film is a classic and features Richard Gere as a rogue, cocky, and brash officer candidate 
with a chip on his shoulder, who tries to navigate his way through officer candidate school to fulfill his dream of flying jets and become a naval aviator. This film is the one that resonates with John the most. John was an officer and a gentleman in the United States Navy who became a pilot at a young age and served at the large naval base at Subic Bay in the Philippines. Subic Bay is the base Richard Gere's character, Zach Mayo, grew up on in this movie. Hey, this is really wonderful work. Where'd you get this, Mayo? Subic Base, Philippines, sir. Ah, sort of recognize the work. What's important to synthesize here is the themes and starring characters of the framed movie posters that we have looked at thus far, with the exception of Somewhere in Time, and the themes and main characters from the movies used to construct the ransom note are synonymous in their overall plot theme, genre, or movie type. Each of the films star nearly the same type of character, a rebel rogue like Commando or gung-ho hero cop with a chip on their shoulder. Who had a propensity for these type of films? The fifth poster that was standing against a wall in the train room was Agatha Christie's Death on the Nile, a detective whodunit mystery from 1978. The film preceding this one in the Agatha Christie series Murder on the Orient Express begins interestingly enough with a fictionalized depiction of the Lindbergh kidnapping. The sixth poster that was in the basement was another classic, Gone with the Wind from 1934. We know from a few books and other case documents that this poster was used as a prop for a Gone with the Wind luncheon party the Ramses threw in Atlanta. There is one last thing on the movies I would like to clear up. In this case, because of a consistent and constant alternative narrative that has been and continues to be populated through the news and social media, I often see or hear it stated online that John and Patsy Ramsey had never seen any of the movies that were depicted in the ransom note. This is simply untrue. In a Rocky Mountain News article from May 5, 2001, entitled Clues in the Case, Lou Smith said that the Ramseys didn't have such movies in their home and hadn't seen those movies. This claim or factual allegation also shows up in the Ramsey vs. CBS lawsuits from 2016. In John Ramsey's lawsuit, Allegation 429, states investigators didn't find any of the ransom note movies in the Ramsey home nor did they find any evidence that any member of the Ramsey family had ever viewed those films the same thing shows up in Burke's lawsuit allegation 446 that says there was no record ever found that the Ramseys had ever seen those films and yet in the Ramseys 1998 interviews Patsy Ramsey admitted to watching the movie Speed on an airplane. And John Ramsey, who was being questioned by Lou Smith and Mike Kane, said when asked if he had ever seen Dirty Harry, it seems like I have. That's an old movie, right? He also admits to watching the movie Speed on an airplane, but without earbuds in, which of course means he couldn't possibly know any of the lines from the film. This is kind of like admitting you had your hand in the cookie jar, but saying you didn't steal a cookie. What do you think? Are you watching closely? Whoever wrote this note was thinking of those particular type of movies. It's like a PhD in ransom notes that was gained through watching movies.